that's only if you're doing government consulting. If you're not, if you're a private business, what does GSA have to do with anything? No, if I'm talking about the definition of the services. See, for okay. software development, the job definition, job the definition of the service that we provide. On your tax form. Yeah. So, so yeah. what does engineering get or not get? Okay, yeah, sorry. So, um, well, okay, so if, let's step back when um, we were talking about service based businesses, and I just mentioned that even if you're doing engineering services, you are not included in this. So, this. So don't get 20%. You do, get you do get. You don't get the phase out. Yeah, there's a phase out. So the phase out was there's a phase out range for if you're in a certain taxable income, then your deduction gets lessened because you're in a certain range of income. Like if your income is higher, usually they'll not give you as much of the deduction. Or like a lawyer, but not for an engineer. Is that what you're? Kind yeah. Of so basically, for service-based businesses, if you're above the phase out range completely if you're out of it completely so this is 415k for married filing joint or 207,000 roughly for everyone else if you're above that range and you're a, you consider yourself a, or the IRS considers you a service based business you do not get the deduction at all because you're above <coughs> that unless that you're doing engineering services unless yeah you're doing engineering services or you're an architect so, so there's those no are the phase two. out for us. Mm -hmm. There'd be no phase out. Um, no, there still is, but this is the this is specific to service based businesses, and then I'm going to talk about not service based businesses after. <laughs> so that's okay. also another section. Yeah. Okay. So okay. So what if you're in the range though, right? So if you're a service based business and you're in the range, there is a calculation for that, which we're going to go over right now. So again, if you're out of the range, then you don't get the deduction at all. If you're under the range, you get the 20%, and if you are in the middle of the range, there is a calculation for that. So that's also in, that's example number two. So we'll just go over those. Um, okay. So uh, the first one is, so everyone here is single. So their phase out is 157,500 to 207,500. So everyone in these examples is a single, uh, person okay okay so basically for Brad net qualifying business income is a hundred thousand so his let's say just say his regular deduction his 20% for that would be um, 20k and then his taxable income is 90 so 20% of that is 18k so basically because he's under the 157,000 range or like for taxable, then he gets the eighteen thousand, which is the lesser of either twenty percent of the hundred thousand or twenty percent of the ninety k. Does everyone understand that one? Yes. Oh, he's paying eighteen thousand. Excuse me. He's paying eighteen thousand. He's getting eighteen thousand deduction. He's getting eighteen thousand deduction. That's what it reads Yeah. Okay. So the next one. Um, let's see. So Don has a hundred thousand business income. And seventy thousand taxable. Oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong one. Um, okay, yeah. So Barbara, so Barbara um, has two hundred k business income, two hundred twenty k taxable income. So she's actually out of the range here, right? So she would have said twenty percent of two hundred thousand is forty thousand, and twenty percent of two hundred twenty is forty four thousand. So she would have gotten a forty thousand dollar deduction. But because she's out of the range, she gets zero. Does everyone mm -hmm. yeah. get that? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so now we have Bill. So Bill is um, 100000 in business income, and then 167500 in taxable, which is inside the range, because the range is, again, around 157000 to 207000 So he's inside the range, and he's over by about ten k, right? So his deduction would have been... 20,000, but they're going to prorate it and then they're going to deduct 4,000 from that, so we only get 16,000. And the way that they prorate it um, is basically the range is $50,000. So if he's over 10,000, that's 20% of $50,000. And so you subtract that from what you would have gotten. Mm -hmm. this, is that clear? Or? So, no. 
Yeah. Yeah. Question. Follow up question. Yeah. yeah. Um, <coughs> So normally what happens is the net qualifying is, let's say, 220, and the, tax, the taxable is 120, say. Okay. Um, so does, the, does this apply to the... No, because your taxable is 120, so okay. it's under. Okay, so it's just range. based on yeah. more taxable. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so the more well, remember to, but minus, uh, oh yeah, basically you're taxable. So it's on the second page after all the, the like, okay, is so everybody familiar with the 1040? Uh, maybe it should, but basically it's like all your income minus any deductions, <coughs> like, like itemized deductions, standard deductions, and then your taxable is on the second page of the 1040. So it's after yeah. your set IRA? It's after, yeah. After okay. AGI. No. Uh, no, because AGI, it's AGI minus itemized deductions minus standard deduction. That's your taxable. Yeah. So if you have a bunch of itemized deductions, your taxable could be way lower than your. Yeah. Okay. This. Yeah, we talked in terms of line numbering. Oh, sorry. I don't actually memorize all the line numbers. <laughs> I didn't bring her a 1040. She has a schedule. C. Yeah. Um, so is this a bonus deduction, or is there things that used to be deductible on a business that are no longer deductible? Um, no, this is a bonus. It's not something that you... I mean, there are some things which I, I will get to later, but um, this is on top of, yeah, everything. Yeah. Now, any tax credits are after you've got calculated your tax, right? So you subtract the tax. Mm -hmm. this is, those are also <coughs> oh, actually credits go on top of your, but um, you get them after your tax. <coughs> so the credits get added on. So it's your the tax that you're supposed to pay on your regular income. If you get any credits, then it'll have a credit back against that. Against that, yeah. right? So that's so that's below. Yeah, that's yeah. below. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So it's unaffected. Yes. Well, yeah. well, well, if your income gets gets reduced <coughs> because of this deduction. That's fine, and then you get a credit, and that's on top of that. Uh, yes, the credit would be after all yeah, of that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, any other okay, questions on this part? Okay, all right, great. Um, okay, so we're moving along. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on to if you are not a service-based business, which I, it seems like most people here probably are, but it's, you know, we'll just cover it anyway. Well, um, we haven't really gotten clarity on that, and maybe you don't know. Yeah, actually, I'm not sure, because, sorry, I don't actually know the <laughs> nuances of me, engineering. So like, probably the, the biggest yeah. elephant in the corner of the room. <laughs> well, I think non-service businesses would be like you're running a restaurant or something like that. Yeah, yeah, but he, so, I think he specifically asked about engineering. About engineering. Yeah, 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 this is yeah. an engineering yeah. organization, yeah. so you said yeah. we're not an example, too. Yeah, so you guys are actually in here then, and what, so I guess it would apply. Would it be okay what, what if we skip the non-service thing? Then the, yes. Yes. This would apply to engineer. Non non-business. Or non-service. I don't, I don't IT is an engineer. How, how many people mm -hmm. have, have a non-service business? Well, it's a combination, right? So some, some of us have both service and non-service. What's predominant? Oh, okay, so it's at least one. What's predominant? Yeah. <coughs> but I think at this point, if you're in engineering, you're going to be in this not service-based business realm of how you calculate the tax because, again, the stuff that we just went through just now, that's doesn't include engineering, so this is everybody else. Oh, but you're okay. So even if you did engineering services, this part coming up is what, because, again, the, the part that we just went through doesn't apply to you. Okay. Um. Are, are you sure about that? Is that a <laughs> I mean, that's what... You expressed some uncertainty earlier, and that's what I've always heard. Right. Right. Oh, you well, got to remember, when they passed this law, there was things written in no, the margin that nobody's been able to read, so well, you're asking her to answer. interpret that. Well, so basically what the IRS says is that engineering services do not count as service-based businesses. What? And that's as much as they've oh. said. Yes. So oh, from <laughs> that, this, you know... I would preclude that you would fall into this other category of not having the phase out <coughs> apply this way. So basically, the um, you, I mean, I'm calling it a not service-based business, but again, because engineering and architects don't fall into that, they would apply these 
the second set of rules that I'm about to go through. Also, the phase out doesn't apply to like a company, a restaurant, or a company that makes things. exactly. Yeah. Well, okay. that's yeah. Like if you sell something or whatnot, then you're a non-service-based business. Um, so if you say have a consulting company and then you switch that to a you know building software, for example, mm -hmm. there would be a going from a services business mm -hmm. to a non-services yeah, business. Yeah, because you're making something now. Okay, so... Not to cause confusion, no. you have a photography business, mm -hmm. you take pictures of the client, yeah. and you sell the client the pixels. Right. So is that a non-service business, that you are selling a tangible item to them, yeah. at least in software? Um, I don't... So photography generally will be classified as service-based. Um, if you get, I know like for sales tax rules, things like that, like if you give them a physical CD versus not, but um, photography generally is a service-based business. If the IRS were to like audit generally, they would say it's a service-based business because you're using <coughs> like a skill. <laughs> can you classify it as a product because the product is a picture? Um, I mean, you can, but I think, again, generally it requires the photographer to have a certain skill in order to, and generally people, yeah, like you could say, I don't know if it would fly with the IRS if you said, oh, I gave them a CD and now I'm going to call it for myself. That's a, well, it may have to do with the fact that when they take, usually when they take photographs, that no one else wants to buy photographs of someone else's family. <coughs> or, oh, I so. mean, yeah, I'm not, yeah, but... <laughs> Um, but anyway, it's also something, again, like if the IRS comes out with more guidance, then that would become more clear, but that's generally. So when, when we fill out our, our tax forms, tax returns, if you say consultant, they ask you what, you know, how do you classify your, your mm -hmm. service, and you input a code, right? Mm -hmm. Is there a table somewhere saying this code belongs to this category? That code belongs to. Does it belong? No, it's to like lar it's largely up to um, the interpretation of the IRS, uh -huh. and there's um, there's another uh, section code section that has, and again I, I kind of read it here too, and that's what they have, and then they will interpret like again they'll they'll look at it and interpret it, and in, in the case of an audit, where they'll does this God reside? <laughs> <laughs> the, the where, where 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 does this authority reside? Uh, again, it's I think it's with the IRS, and if they yeah, if they look at your business and whether they classify it that so way. So it varies from agent to agent. Yeah, and then a lot of the, there hasn't <clears throat> been much like case study law on it, so it's kind of vague at this point. Yeah. yeah. So, so that, that was the question I had. So how much of this is too preliminary, right? I keep reading the IRS mm -hmm. will issue guidance on right. this or that. I mean, right. are you expecting a lot to come in the next six months? Yeah, well, I think they're like, this is for 2018, and the filing tax season for 2018 isn't until next year anyway, so we don't, again, I don't, yeah, I don't know yeah. when, um, but I'm sure they're working on it right now. by October. Yeah. Well, you got to know by the time you make your decisions on how you structure your business and what business you work on, right. early in the year, when you're making the money and you know how it's going to be taxed. Right, and then that's another thing where um, generally you might not want to s do a switch unless that it becomes more clear what they're going to come out with. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on <laughs> to how to do a service-based business and um, uh, sorry, not a not service-based business. Okay, so it's very similar. So if you're under the threshold, the, um, the phase-out ranges, then you get the full 20, right? If you're inside of it, then you have a proration. And then if you go over it, this is where for a non-service-based business, if you go over it, you still can get a deduction. So it's phased out, but there's another calculation for it. So um, let's see. Okay, so this one is example... Um, three. Okay. So the rule on this is um, if you're over, again, the phase out range, the, the, the top of the phase out range, and you are not a service based business, then you can get the greater of 50% of wages or 
25% of wages plus 2.5% of unadjusted basis on depreciable assets. So um, I'll break that down a little bit. So basically your unadjusted basis on depreciable assets is whatever like tangible assets you own that have um, before you depreciate anything off of them. So it's pretty much <coughs> like what I interpret as is what you bought it for. Um, so if you have like, um, like if you bought a, a computer for $10,000, then the, the basis of unadjusted basis is 10000 on that. Um, so, okay, so I, I think it'd be easier to go through the example on this one as well, and then we can go through questions after. Okay, so for this one, um, we have Carly. So her net qualifying business income is uh, 